All right, so hello. This is uh, a video for uh, Adapted Toys, and uh, this is from Santa Switch Adapted Santa Switch Adapted Toys. And what we're going to do, I always like videos that start out explaining what we're going to make, rather than having to watch the whole video to see what you made. So here's a uh, My Pal Violet. And my pal Violet has been switch adapted. Normally, that you wouldn't have this this controller. Um, I modified it. I ran a couple of of connectors out the back, mark them so that they know we know which one goes where. <clears throat> and so, for special needs children or somebody who doesn't have the mobility to reach out and play with this, squeeze the hands, which all work on this toy. So there's the sleep button and. There's the on off and we can play the music just like it's factory or go to the store and buy it. This is what uh, this is what your toy is capable of doing. But for those people who can't reach out and touch those items on the toy, um, I've got approximately a six foot cord here that allows for it to be controlled by a modified uh, Simon toy. And so it's color matched. So blue is going to represent the foot. So there's the sleepy noises. Going to do that. Uh, red is the on-off button, which activates the same thing as if we punch the, the uh, paw. Green is going to make music. And yellow is the uh, question and um, discussion one that comes across over here. So changeable. And we're going to we're going to turn them back off again going to go into sleep mode. So this is what we're making. So this is a completed one and I'm going to set them to the side. Uh, demonstrate real briefly here. These are the tools we're going to do. Now since I've already done the My Pal Violet, um, I've kind of marked out what we're going to find once, once we get inside. There's a, I'll hold that up just to see if it's still enough for you. But you'll understand what this is when we open it up. It's the color coding for the wires inside. Here's just a few, I think this is all the tools we need for this project. Um, we need to cut open the packaging because we're going to take this toy <clears throat> directly from the, the store. This is, I bought this, it hasn't opened it up yet at all. Uh, packaging is kind of interesting. Um, well, uh, meter so that we can uh, make sure we have the right wiring when the time comes. Screwdrivers, cutters, we're going to do some soldering. Um, I like to make it as clean as possible when I do these toys, so we're going to uh, we're going to be doing some soldering instead of clipping onto the wiring. So we're not going to affect the wiring at all, and we're going to adapt this toy to be functioning with the larger normal size Simon. So that's what we've got going on here today. We're going to match these two up. It will go out as a unit. This will be matched to this toy. Well, this could be used with other switch adapted toys. You're only going to have two toys you can hook to it and function because of the way this is set up, unless you specifically wire the toys for that. So that's a that's something else. Um, I already made these up. So I will have another video that shows how to turn a Simon toy into a four button uh, switch activated toy device controller. So let's open up the toy. Uh, again, I, I haven't opened this up yet, so we have to cut all the tape that, are, that is holding the packaging in place. Let's see, I think I've got it there, here, and then for the back, we've got this and a little piece of tape on this end. And Let's move a couple of things for just a moment here until we get the packaging opened up. So this toy has, let's see, this toy has a couple of things holding it into place. Now I'm being pretty careful about making sure that I retain the the packaging because when I'm done with this toy I'm going to put right back into the original packaging so that anybody buying it 
will be able to present it to their child direct from the store in the factory packaging. There will be modifications, obviously. I'm going to turn this around. There's some tape that's holding the back down on this side. So you can see here that the way they've packaged this, it's to allow for in the store you to gain access to the back and do some programming. Well, we don't need any of this. So, with some exception, um, all of the packaging will be here except this device here. We're just cutting the tape so I can remove that, kind of get it out of the picture. But <clears throat> when you buy it from the store, you can see that the actual control box for the uh, toy is pulled out of the body and it's in this packaging. So we're going to take this and I'm going to get rid of that. Get this going. This will not be a part anymore. It's garbage. We're going to remove the toy out. So now we can set the packaging aside until we're ready to repackage this toy. All right. So we need to gain access to the wiring. And again, I always work with my toys functioning because I want to see what's going on every step. I do not want to discover later that I've made a mistake and I cannot activate the toy. Um, so we need to gain access to the wiring. So the wiring is inside of here. Uh, this is the control box. We're going to set aside the battery cover for the moment. And I need to get behind here. This is held in place by a tie wrap. This will probably be one of the more difficult things you do. You need to get that tie wrap out of there. And it's tight. And you don't want to mess up the fabric. So we're going to pry it open. Pry the uh, tie wrap away from the body of the uh, uh, come on here <clears throat> like I said this is probably the most awkward part of this whole process is carefully doing this without damaging the toy um, there's a seam here there's uh, a seam once they put the tie wrap on it, they tied it shut with a little piece of thread. It's probably hard to see here, but there's a little tiny knot right here. And I'm going to open this up, see if I can't get it. Get the other screwdriver. Open this up to see if I can't get that tie wrap to pull out. Uh, some of them they cut the tie wrap off, on this one they did not. We're not going to use this tie wrap again. So we're just going to snip it off. Uh, one of the things that I uh, discovered early on when I started adapting toys is that uh, these tie wraps are like 18 inches long. And so I bought some special tie wraps so that I could make sure when I was done that the toy was back together as uh, close to factory as possible. <clears throat> so now that the tie wrap has been cut, take it out. I'm going to set this to the side because I did cut it to where I can still use it for a smaller toy if, if, if possible, but it's usually not. We'll see. Oops. <clears throat> Things rolling off the table. So, a lot of the videos you see, people open this up and they start doing something with the wiring. And when you see these, you can, you can kind of ring out, oops, sorry about that. So you can kind of ring out, uh, they color coded the wiring to go to exactly where it's, it's, it's smart to go. So green, green wiring. Um, purple, purple wiring, and so if you tug on that, gently tug on that wire, you can kind of, oops, just get the, uh, 
you can pull on the components. So <clears throat> normally you would wring out the wiring to make sure which one you went to where. Um, I do not uh, modify my toys with to, to the point that I have eliminated those controls. I want anyone who walks up to the toy to be able to operate it as factory intended. So we're going to take my cordless drill and we're going to take the screws out of this battery box and control box because uh, what we want is inside of here. This is where we're going to modi modify things. So we got the four screws out, loosened up. We're going to set this aside, <clears throat> pull the battery control box up um, so that I don't lose the screws inside or it's just really, really inside the doll because that's they, they disappear in there and then you would never see them again I think um, I always take the four screws out and probably lose one where did it go there it is it did it went inside the doll okay and on my base I have magnets there they go so here's where we're going to make our connections we're going to take these two wires we're going to run them inside this control box okay and we're going to be able to control four features because we're using uh, instead of the monotype plugs we're using the um, stereo plugs and we're going to reach in and we're going to do some very careful soldering and I'm going to hold this up the circuit board comes in. These are all wires are all soldered to the circuit board. And down here is the connections. And I have already rung out so I know what's where on these connections. But it's also marked. So I'm just kind of holding things up while I point it at the camera here. Let's try this again with that here. Because we, we, get, we don't want to stress those wires because the speaker's there. But these are identified on the circuit board, and I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera or not. Uh, I don't know. Here we go. We're going to get really, really close. But it, it says left hand, right hand, left foot, right foot, and speaker and LED. Um, so that's the, uh, I think it says LED. Yeah, LED minus. Um, and it, the wiring that goes to the heart. So we're going to reach, the wiring's going to come in, it's going to connect right there. How are we going to get it there? I found that there's an excellent spot. We're going to move this self, is the uh, phone connector out of the way. They provide this for programming. I'm going to pull this out of the way, and I'm going to drill a hole right through here. Right through there, the wire's going to come out here. From this side, there's a uh, form mark when they made this. There's a little mark right here that makes for an excellent place to drill. And I'm just going to drill through both this case and the outer case and project out with a hole large enough to run these two wires through. Alright, so let's change my bit out to that. Gently hold things up. I don't want to drill into my countertop. So I'm using a brad bit. These are great because I got that point on there. It means that if I put this on there it is not going to walk. It's going to drill exactly where I, where I want it to go. Okay, so now I've got a hole, all the little bits of plastic, hole just came out right there. Okay, so it's right beside where the battery is going to, the battery box is going to slide in that cover, and it now allows for us to run this wire through. Um, 
I like the hole to be as tight and as snug as possible, but that also means that you got to fiddle to get these wires in because it's a pretty tight spot. We're going to find out if I'm going to be fortunate today. Some people would try it would strip the wires before doing this so that the outer sheeting was off. Um, I don't like doing that because then it makes it hard to get the outer sheeting inside. I mean, it's hard enough as it is. In fact, I'm going to oversize that hole just a little bit inside, not the one outside. A little walking back and forth with the drill bit to create a bit of a gap there. Get rid of the excess. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so these wires are, by the way, I, I did slide a, uh, uh, some shrink tubing on here because I want to be able to, for everyone to know which one of these to plug in. Uh, only have two of them, but still, it's easier if you know. Uh, now I'm going to strip the wires inside the sheathing off, and I want it down. See, I'm going to figure out how much I want to project out. So that's probably about right. Strip the outer sheathing off. We're going to match this one up. And do the same thing with that at about the same length. I'm going to Tentatively leave that up there a bit. I, I stripped it off because its next step is to keep the wiring from coming out. Put some zip ties on it. So, and I want the zip ties to be pretty close to this, which makes it awkward to try to strip the wiring after you put the zip ties on. So, zip tie them together. I'm using some fairly lightweight zip ties on this. So I'm going to put another zip tie on individual wires, individual cables rather. So that when I snug that back down, it cannot accidentally be pulled out and relax. There's a nice strain relief. On the uh, on the cabling, remove the excess. Okay, so now we've got string relief. They're not going to come out, and when we're done, it's going to stick out nicely far enough to be to tuck this back in. I only moved it out of the way so that I didn't damage it when I drilled my hole. Now we've got the wiring. Um, we are going to combine, there's going to be some ringing out here. I've got my, <clears throat> normally I would, I said, it will depend. We'll see what happens when I ring these out. Sometimes I ring them out because I forget what's going on. I have too many wires, but when we plug this into the controller will be able to identify what's activating so we may not have to ring them out. So we have that handy just in case. Um, expose this up. Strip the wires. The blue ones are going to go together. So these become common. And they're both running from, from the uh, controller. I'll hook, I'm going to hook the controller up in a minute and you'll see what's going to, what's going to happen there. So, 
glues go together so I'm going to strip those, twist them together and that's done or that's re ready for the next step. Uh, these do not go together but I find with this particular wire stripper it's uh, kind of convenient to have two wires in there. That way I'm not pinching too far on uh, and cutting into the copper. So we're gonna... I always twist the wires to help keep them together and manage them a little more so that there's not some errant straggler that might cross over into the controller. Uh, these are a bit longer than they need to be. So the same thing I'm going to pinch these back. Twisting the wire again to make sure that uh, there's no strands running wild. Okay, so oops, you can see here on the blue one, I don't know, what I, I can see on the blue one that there's a couple of errant strands. While I was doing that, I suppose I should have gotten my soldering iron heated up, but right now is a good time to get it plugged in and turned on. So, we're done with these for the, at the moment. I'm at the point that uh, Santa needs his reading glasses to see what he's doing. And we're going to set this up. I use some a holder here for my soldering so that when I'm uh, tinning the wires and starting things up, you see we're done with this. <clears throat> when we're tinning the wires, it's not walking away from me while I'm uh, adding some solder to it. It makes it helpful. I'm going to move the entire doll here, since I'm right-handed. Move that. Let's see here. So, it looks to me like everything's still in view. So, and I said that we're going to not have to ring the wires because I've got a control box here hooking these up to the color-coded wire, blue to blue, and uncoated or black to uncoated or black is there and my solder and the tweezers on the right side so when we these get soldered together I've discovered that in the in the ring out on this controller on this uh, circuit board the black wire or the one on this very end closest to me is my common ground negative whatever you want to refer to it as in here. But it's the one that we're going to hook the blue wires to so that, uh, let's see, they came apart there, so that um, it, it reduces the number of wires we have to hook up, hook up <clears throat> to make the, uh, the doll activate. So, check and see if the wire, the uh, heating iron, soldering iron is heated up, it is. We're going to tin these, and so, let's see, we're just going to get a little, little bit of solder on each one of them, so that when we lay this down on the circuit board, it just, uh, all I have to do is heat the solder up for where it's being laid down. You can see here, these have come together. So let's just hold them separate from each other. Tint them up. Get a little bit of solder on there. Okay. So I'm going to clean the excess solder off because I want that clean as possible going in. So now I'm going to switch this over so that my third hand is holding the solder so 
So when we're ready to solder things onto the board, it, uh, you activated the other toy down there while I was moving it off my chair. So now we're at the point where we're going to solder up onto the board. I want the blue wire to go on the very far left of this board. So I'm going to start on the left and move across here because again being right-handed I've got, uh, got the soldering going to take place on this right side going across. So let's pop. Oops, not the wrong one. Smoothies out of the way. <clears throat> I want this wire fairly short. I left it long so that I could twist it and manage it properly. Let's move over to the right side. I, I hope that's not in your camera view. I don't think so. Fat fingers. So we're going to lay that down right on the far left, which is the ground or the common. We'll get a little solder on here. We reach in and I'm going to melt. And I hold it on there for it extra moment or two because I really want to make sure that in addition to the solder going on that I have melted the solder on the toy on the connection on the circuit board so that we have a good strong connection here okay now the, the ringing out the, the when I was talking about earlier what controls what I can read on the board that approximately in the middle here, there's, there's on the con connections reading from the uh, our right to left, there's the right hand, the left hand, the right foot, and the left foot. So the left foot on this toy is red. Yes. Now, the left foot is also the on off button and the active button. So we're gonna make it red on our controller. So, which one is it? Well, let's see. Could be any one of these, these four. I'm going to hold one of the wires down and just nicely touch the left foot on the controller and I'm going to punch the red button. Nothing happened. Let's punch. Okay, so Give me your name. When I punch, Go to leapfrog.com. When I punch the blue button, that activated. So I know that this wire that I was just holding is the blue button. I try to put, when I make my toys, these two wires coming out of this one cable is going to control the feet. These two wires, the other cable, is going to control the hands. When I do my six button toys, then there's other features that it might touch. So, I, all, I just lost track of what I was doing. The yellow wire, let's see if I might, how my guesswork is. The yellow wire is the blue button, which means the white wire. Let's put the white wire on the left foot, holding that in place and punch the red button. Okay. I, I missed something here. I'm not holding it in place. Left foot. Oh, I got Teach the wrong me your name. Good. Teach me your Okay. So now idiosyncrasy comes up. This box is not wired exactly like I wanted it to be. I have to go looking. I'm not going to ring them out, but I do not have the left foot button in my hand, the red button in my hand yet. So it's one of these other wires. So let's put from the other cable, I grab that yellow wire 
And th this is why these are sp uh, specific. I'm going to mark this box it has to go with this toy. If I don't, then some reprogramming has to be done. But we want when, I, when these toys leave here, they're going to be color matched. So this yellow wire now, I'm going to touch it to the left foot. I now Teach have. Me your name. I now have the on off button, which is the red red foot. So I know what it is. I'm gonna lay that wire down and solder it in place. I'm trying to get the I, I, I know that, that that's not camera friendly there or view friendly, but I'm trying to get that wire. I want to be able to hold it in place over the top. And I know everyone's saying, oh, geez, Jerry, what are you doing? You got metal tools and your batteries are hooked up and you're going to short something out. Um, I haven't yet. I've discovered that these circuit boards are highly insulated across their connections. Let's sneak in here very carefully and heat up that left foot connection. Teach me so your name. I temporarily Go to shorted. Leapfrog.com slash my pal too. Let's turn, Hi. turn him off. Okay, so I did not make a good connection there. The wiring is I moved it before it was cooled, so the wire came off. I wasn't holding it in a very good position. And I know that you can't see this very well on the camera, but this is not a, a video on how to solder. It's a video on basically once you open up the toy so that you have an idea as to what you see and you can put the you know, wired up yourself if that's what you want to do. Okay, we're going to get a more solder on here and approach this from a different direction. Okay. Now we've got a good solder on it. Let's check our red button. Teach me your name. So we know. We know that the red red button Teach me your name. is going to activate. Go to leap what I wanted it to do. Let's find that blue button again. So it's just not hooked up here. It's not active. I want uh, I want the blue button to operate the foot. And I think it was this white wire. I want the blue button to operate the left foot. Or the, I'm sorry, make that the right foot. I'm looking at the doll the way it is, uh, different orientation. I want the blue wire to activate the right foot. So I'm just going to touch the wire to there, and that's not it. Ah. Ah. Five minutes of it's over bedtime here. music. Snuggle up. Okay. Turn them off. So it wasn't the white. Let's try the yellow. We're going to put the yellow, we're going to touch it to the right foot and punch the blue button. Uh, Got it. 10 minutes of 15 minutes of... Okay. So now we've identified which wire goes on there. Let's do that. Same thing, we're going to hold that wire in there nice and low to the toy. And here's the, and, so this is why I'm activating the toy with the batteries in it. I want to be able to follow what's going on. I want the toy to tell me that my little game of operation that I was practicing when I was a kid is working out.
Nice. Five minutes of bed. So now it's activated by the bar. And it's activated by the button. Red is Five the on and minutes. off. Power on and off. So, if I, so now I've got two hands left. This left paw is green. I want the green button to activate that feature. So again, very carefully, we're at 50-50 chance here, and I missed it. So this is the right paw, this is the left paw. I could, I'm pretty confident I could just solder this in place, but let's double check it. Perfect. Music. We'll hold that in there. Get a little solder. Clean off the solder. So we're double check. I might have my head in your way, but I apologize for that. I just need to be able to see what's going on from this standpoint. Saw the solder mount. Patty cake, patty. I don't have to test this one. I run out of possibilities. I know this goes on the right hand. A little solder. Transfer it in here. Warm up the circuit. Cool. Turn off the soldering iron because we're done. Okay, so what do I want this toy to do? I want it to turn on. Teach me your and turn off. I want the right foot to activate for sleep, which is blue. I want the green paw to activate. When I punch the green button, it does. Turn it off. And the other paw, I, I call it the information paw because it asks questions. It Can you think data. of something blue? And I turned it off. It is now soldered up and done. We're going to put this back together. I'm going to push uh, the wires down just a little bit. So here's where the strain relief comes in. Really, really nice. Line up the connections. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be something here. Making sure that the wiring is not in the way when things come together. Because you don't want to pinch any wires, otherwise the toy's not gonna function. screws go. I remember I pushed them over here on this magnet. So let's get the magnet out here. Shake all the screws off. No way. Wait, wait, wait. Just made a mistake. That's a different magnet. These screws are a little bit larger. And I put them over on this magnet. Okay. And I drop it on the floor. reach over and grab my screwdriver. Um, I have put these together using the power screwdriver. It's not recommended because you're running into plastic, power screwdriver, next thing you know you've got a uh, stripped screw, uh, overpowered it in. Um, so I'm, I'm accustomed to it. I have yet to strip one, but I know that a lot of people 
prefer not to do that. Since I don't have the screwdriver tip in the cord the screwdriver at the moment, we won't do it this time. And let's see. Yep, I found a screw. I want to jump to the floor. Okay, so it's always good to have extra screws <clears throat> so you can ask yourself, what did I forget? Where did I leave that off from? But I happen to know that that was already on the magnet. So that little task. We're done with all the soldering so we can move these things out of the way. Now we need to put the doll back together. Got myself a brand new zip tie. And let's run the zip tie around the uh, pocket of the fabric. It usually catches when it comes to that seam there, so you kind of feel it by. I think I got it. And then it pops out here. Go ahead and start this, but I definitely do not want to pinch it down until after I've got it on the toy. Got it back together. So I believe that this is intended to be installed this way. I'm going to install it upside down. The reason I'm going to install it upside down is because I want my connections to be clean. I want them to be on the bottom of the toy. There's a you, you, the indents here. This will be obvious when you open the toy. You want to put it back where the uh, where it was before. It'll be on that indent, so the zip tie is nice and snug right there on that. Okay. Kind of moving it around here because I don't want it right on the corner. But that's where I ended up accidentally putting it. Okay. I'm going to take it just like the factory did. We're going to tuck that back in. Let it do what it wants to do. And when we opened it out of the box, this toy was not stuffed. We're done playing with it. We're going to put the body back or the battery control box back inside the toy. <clears throat> this is something that the, uh, the purchaser would have to have done if they bought it from the store anyway. So this just gets us a little bit ahead of the game for the, for the client. And again, there's no reason for it to be outside the, the body of the toy. Relocate the battery cover and get that back on there. I, I, should, I could have done that before I got this far. Where's, what side is it on? But there again, if uh, whenever it's time for someone to change the batteries, they've got to do this anyway. Yeah. Okay, so there it is. Going backwards. Get the battery cover back on there. Oops. Yeah. It is. They, they make these toys. It fascinates me how tight everything is. And uh, on some of the toys, it's just really a, it's a challenge to get to get to that battery box or to get to the control box or something when, when I do my modifications. So, stuck. come on, you can get me. Put it back in here. Okay. 
the side. And we're done. Okay. I'll leave, up, leave line that up against the girl for a moment. And again, we're going to activate. On Teach off me button. your name. Go to leapfrog.com. Turn off the on off button. There's the sleep button. And here is the sleep button. Nice. Uh, let's see. We don't have a purple button, but we have a question mark over here. I'm getting what my favorite animal. Is and a puppy. let's turn them off. Let's play some music. Nice. Thank you, Violet. Very nice of you. And turn them off. So I'm going to take this toy. I'm going to put it right back into the factory packaging. With everything that was in it. So that is ready to go out. And when you get it, it will be as it came from the store, slight modification, ready to go. So there it is. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, you don't need to see me repackage it. I'm sure that you... But I, I would suspect that if you're going to do this, that uh, you wouldn't want to repackage it. You want to use it. You want to start using it right away. All right. Thank you.